Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be introducing a dear friend of mine who is also one of my cycling teammates on my, on my cycling team. Her name is Suyin and she is going to be doing something very special this year. Every year, uh, as part of our Giving Back initiative, we have someone, uh, including me at one point, uh, riding a tour called the Tour of Nilgiris, which is a tour that goes through the three southern states of India. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala for about maybe approximately a thousand kilometers over seven days. And one of those riders rides for the Giving Back initiative to raise funds for our charitable work and our spine surgeries which are subsidized for people who can't afford them. So it's my great pleasure today to sit down and have a chat with Suyin so that you get to know her a little bit. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Hi Sue, welcome to the Giving Back headquarters in a way. This is where, this is Sparsh Hospital, Infantry Road, and this is where we normally do our recordings. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how you got into cycling. I'm Suyin, and uh, I'm a pastry chef. I started cycling in 2019, simply to, to complete an event, the Ironman 70.3 in Goa. So I trained very hard for it for the whole year, and I went, I joined on many races. I took up a lot of events, running, cycling. And so then COVID also happened. The training went on anyways. And finally, so in 2022 was when the race, the Ironman Goa happened. I, and after, despite all of those years of training for it, um, I had, I got COVID for the second time. So that, that really hit me hard. And I think, uh, after, so that was 2022, for the next two years, I have not signed up for any races. I've not, because some, something just changed, in, I suppose, in, um, like, I, I wasn't able to push myself as much. So, Tour of Nilgiris is like a comeback event for you. Yes, it's a comeback for, and also for giving back. So I don't... Right, so giving back, come back. <laughs> okay, so uh, how did you end up in Bangalore, India? I used to be an offshore geophysicist. I, wow. I would... You know, we would sail all around looking for oil and gas. That's pretty much the and. Um, so you would do offshore exploration. Yes. Mostly, we, uh, okay, on the high seas. Yeah, and we would collect data and then process the data on board, find out where where potentially where oil reserves could be. So one of my earlier projects was in off the Andamans near Port Blair. So that was my first time coming to India actually, and so one thing led to another. I also met my my future husband in, in the Andamans. And that was when I knew that seismic exploration, because you're away for such long periods of time offshore, it wasn't sustainable for, for a relationship. So I, I quit the job and I went, decided to learn something entirely different. I took up, uh, I went to pastry school for a year. One of the things that I really wanted to do was knowing how to make things with my hands, sort of, have, tangible sort of uh, uh, feel to it, making stuff. Creating things with Creating things, then, yeah. yeah. Just transforming flour, sugar, and eggs into pastries. That's just something that I, something that actually I was, it felt so complex because I never knew how to bake before I went to pastry school. I was really clueless. And so, one year into it, I really I fell in love with baking. It's it's, it's a mix of science and creativity. Right. Because baking is a science and creativity in the sense that you what kind of flavors you 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 put into it, what how you should decorate the cake. So it's it's sort of free form, and that's and yeah, that's who I am now. I'm a pastry chef. <laughs> so I know you have a channel on Instagram which uh, is called Yin and Yum, which is your right. your pastry business that's and. Right. Uh, yeah, the pictures you post on that are quite uh, <laughs> enticing, to say the least. Um, every time we look at those pictures, we feel like ordering some, something <laughs> from you. Uh, I also know that you're a big pet lover, you and your husband, Vandit. And um, I think somewhere in your heart, you have a very soft spot for mm -hmm. animals. Mm -hmm. Maybe a spot that's as soft as your Japanese cheesecake. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about that. I think you've rescued uh, some dogs off the street and uh, got them into your home, looked after them. So yeah, we have, uh, well, we had 
two two dogs which we rescued, but they've they've passed. And also now we we still have two of them who they are also rescued. One of them she was tied in a in a garden, never taken for walks, and possibly kept for breeding purposes. So a, a, a rescue a group have come and taken her away. And so my husband was also wounded. He's he's offered to to adopt her, and then that was when we were in the Andaman. So she had a great life there in on the beach, swimming whenever she wants. So the other dog that we have is is a chocolate Labrador, and him we found him abandoned on the streets of uh, ECR. So we took him to a to a pet hospital, and he had a tick fever, also anemic <clears throat> and cancer I mentioned. So even the vets who had treated him, they were really surprised, like how, how, how is this dog still alive with all of the issues that he had? But I mean, Chewy, his name is Chewbacca, we, that's why we named him. Uh, he, he's, he's got a fighting spirit. He's, uh, he, he loves life, like he loves his food, he loves his plush cushions. And so he made it true. And we also, I mean, but it's always a fight for him. We, we found out about two, two, three months ago, he has a mass cancer in his spleen. And so now it's, uh, yeah, he's getting treatment for them. But I mean, yeah, we, we are both. So interestingly, on this channel, we have spoken about a neurochemical called oxytocin, mm -hmm. which is uh, something that is released in our brains when we have contact with pets. And it's supposed to be very beneficial to the owners of the pets also. Mm. <laughs> and it's a kind of hormone that leads to uh, social bonding. And uh, it's also found when you perform altruistic acts. So I think now that you are riding for giving back uh, through the tour of Nilgiris, which is something that we do every year as part of giving back. Um, we have one person who rides the tour of Nilgiris and raises funds. Uh, for subsidizing our spine surgeries through giving back. Mm -hmm. And this year you've been very gracious to accept to do that for us. And um, that just shows that there's going to be more oxytocin in your life. <laughs> 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 Tell us about uh, how you became part of the team Spectrum Racing and uh, your experience with racing as part of the team. So in 2019 also when I took up cycling to fulfill the Ironman event, and I started joining a lot of races. I've met a lot of cyclists, and one of them was Dr. Avin. And uh, your husband, Vandit, is also part of the team. I thought, what better way to learn how, how to race than to join a racing team? So that's when, that's when I got induct inducted, I suppose. <laughs> so I did a number of races, and... And I think you podiumed at a uh, few races as well. I, I, I realized that I was quite okay and not, not too bad at, at, at racing. I think you're just being modest, <laughs> but uh, I think you did have a couple of podiums, if I'm not mistaken. A, a number, quite a number of podiums. Uh, yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, having caught COVID for the second time, it just, uh, I, I couldn't push myself the way I, I felt like I could used to. And so everything has taken a backseat, just kind of uh, doing mostly gentler rides and trying to hopefully push back again to racing, maybe. <laughs> what was the the last BBCH race you did? Um, that was, so there were two races that I did two weeks after I gotten COVID for the second time. Mm -hmm. So first was the Ironman race that I did, which I struggled really really badly it could be the heat it could be the the extra fatigue that you feel when you when you recover from covid and so i i was quite i was quite careful in the sense that i'm very attuned to how i'm feeling and i know that i will stop if if i have to so that that was one of the toughest races i've ever done it was just trying to push through and you know you, you, you kind of feel like your heart is is trying to tell you to stop in, I mean, your body is just screaming agony, but uh, yeah, I mean, I took some rest in between, but it wasn't, and the, what's, what's painful is also that because I had, this was my A race, I, I've trained so hard for it, and you know, you spend a lot of time, but sometimes circumstances like this can change how, it, how, how things turn out, so it's, uh, but... <laughs> 
I'm not sure why I I made it sound like this. <laughs> what about BBCH races? Have you do you remember one of the? I've I've done a number of uh, a few BBCH races as well. So the last one was also after Ironman. I've done the the Nandi Nandi uh, Nandi Epic race. That was also quite uh, quite hard naturally. That was one week after the Ironman race, and uh, I I mean I maybe it's a bit of luck as well but i did also podium for for the race oh you podiumed at the nandi in the women's uh, podium right actually not to not to brag but i think i podium in all of the races that i've uh, i've maybe not so to... celebrated <laughs> cyclist <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking forward to get you getting a podium at tfn also <laughs> <laughs> i i mean that would be a that would be tough because like for for the past two years it's just been mostly a maintenance or trying to get back to base and trying to build back the cardiovascular that I've most likely lost because of yeah the multiple covid stuff but i'm sure you have a training plan in place for the next one month till tfn starts maybe a little bit of helping get back your base fitness yes i i'll try to ride you know in a not not to put too many too much miles in you know yeah. in squeezing that much in in a short time that's also not going to be yeah. beneficial but it also could be that you're very well rested now <laughs> so you might do better than you expect <laughs> i'm looking forward to it because uh, tfn is is one of the uh, is is a tour that every cyclist would know they talk about they they yeah. rave they they rave about it people who have done it they will they will say in a heartbeat they will just go back again So in set in the New Guinea is uh, I I mean I've been there a few times not in the same route and not over yeah that many days but it's a, it's a beautiful place to cycle in like you you can just spend hours and hours riding and the 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 climbs it's you're just is yeah it's it's fruitful like you, you you're going to suffer but you know that you'll be rewarded you're at the top and then yeah all of the forests that surrounds or the the vistas the estates and the, i think the camaraderie is also something to look forward to a lot of new friends and uh, typically friends that you make at tfn are mostly friends for a lifetime yes yes uh, i've done tfn 3 times and one time i did it when as a giving back rider when you raised funds for giving back and so this is going to be your first tfn that is it is going to be my first tfn i've been wanting to do it for i mean we've been speaking about it it's just something comes up because it's is in december so some travels will happen and yeah it's really wonderful that your first tfn you're going to be riding as a rider for giving back very honored to do so <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure you'll have a great time make lots of friends and great memories i so where can uh, people follow you on social media i'll be posting updates on on the rides every day while we're doing the tfn on on yin and yam that's the social media On Instagram, the, on Instagram handle, on Instagram yeah. handle, yeah. So our giving back will also be collaborated. Yeah, we will collaborate with you on on your posts, and we also might have a few surprises for those of you who are interested in donating. But that's yet to be announced. I think few people know how bad a pain is when when it affects your back. So uh, people can be immobile. They. It, it affects their lives tremendously and they can't have regular lives so what what i think giving back is doing is a noble cause they provide uh free surgeries for people who are not people who are underprivileged financially and that gives them a whole a, new, a whole new lease of life so please uh, follow us on giving back uh, blr on instagram you can also visit our website which is www.givingback.co.in where there are a lot of details available about the work we do the kind of surgeries we perform the people we have helped the people who've helped us help people like suyin and many other friends and there's also a link to where you can make your donations of course donations of a certain amount will get you some nice giving back memorabilia so do check out www.givingback.co.in Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, you're most welcome. Thanks for having me as a No, no, no. <laughs> you're doing all the hard work of writing. <laughs>